Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to explain the function and location of the three different types of muscle tissue, and I'm going to finish talking about connective tissue. In my last video, I was able to cover everything except for bone, so that's where I will start. So the proper name for bone is osseous tissue, and there are two types of osseous tissue compact osseous tissue and spongy osseous tissue. So compact osseous tissue is found on the exterior of bones and it accounts for 80% of osseous tissue so it's much more common than spongy osseous tissue. And compact osseous bones are made up of osteons, that's the structural unit of compact osseous tissue. So an osteon is this entire circle, this entire thing is an osteon. And inside each individual osteon, you have in the center your central canal. And then around the central canal, you have lamellae. And you can think of lamellae like the rings on a tree. So this layer is one lamellae and then this layer is another lamellae. So in between the lamellae we have lacuna which are empty holes in which the osteocytes reside. You may remember the word lacunae from when we were talking about cartilage. It's the same word and it's just an empty hole where the osteocyte is residing. So what is an osteocyte? If you remember, Whenever you see site at the end of the word, it means a cell. So osteocyte just means a bone cell. And I will put a little red line. That's a lacunae. That's a lacunae. Now, in between the lacunae, we have canaliculi, which are the little black lines radiating out from the center of they're radiating out from the central canal. So I put them in green. Just all of these tiny little black lines coming out from the center, those are all canaliculi. The root word there, canal, um, so the canaliculi are little passageways that are connecting the lacunae um, to each other and to the central canal to allow nutrients and other material to pass between them. The structure of spongy osseous tissue is very similar. Um, it has the same basic parts, except instead of having an osteon as the structural unit, the structural unit is the trabeculae. Um, so the trabeculae forms kind of a honeycomb-like network. Um, in which there's a lot of open space in between the trabeculae, and that is where bone marrow is found. Moving on to muscle tissue. This is skeletal muscle. You can tell because it's striated 
striated just means that it has these light and dark bands of color. Also, it's multinucleated, so the nuclei are all of these purple guys that are out along the edges. Skeletal muscle has a lot of nuclei. And as most of you probably know, you find skeletal muscle attached to bones. And the function of skeletal muscle is to allow for voluntary movement. Um, one note, if you are a student here at Northampton Community College, our skeletal muscle slide is terrible and you can't really see the striations on our actual skeletal muscle slide but um, on the fibrocartilage slide if you go all the way to the bottom you can find good skeletal muscle um, and if you're not sure what you're looking for you can always go to the science resource center and ask somebody there or maybe ask your professor in lab Next we have cardiac muscle, which like skeletal muscle, it is also striated. So it also has the light and dark lines in it. Um, although they're a little bit fainter here. Uh, one difference you'll see right off the bat is instead of having many nuclei, um, there are a lot less because Cardiac cells are uninucleate, so there is only one nucleus per cardiac cell. Also, cardiac cells um, branch off into different directions, whereas skeletal muscle um, looks more like a bunch of straight tubes going in one direction. Also, you can differentiate between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle because cardiac muscle have these little purple lines. There's already something pointing to them, but I'll highlight it. These purple lines in between the individual cardiac cells, which are called intercalated discs, which is a type of cell junction. So this allows um, for the muscle contraction in one cardiac cell to spread to the cardiac cell next to it, which is why your heart can beat in a rhythmic fashion um, and it can beat as a unit. And quite obviously the location is the heart and the purpose is to pump blood. And the last type of muscle tissue is smooth muscle tissue. It's called smooth muscle because it's not striated. There are no dark and light bands. Um, also, like cardiac muscle, it's uninucleate. Um, but you can differentiate it pretty easily because you do not see um, any striations. You don't see any intercalated discs. And you find smooth muscle um, on the walls of hollow organs. It's a type of involuntary muscle um, that, allows you, that allows your body to move matter inside of the hollow organs. So for example, um, it allows your body to move food through your intestines. And that's a wrap on histology. Have a good day and have fun learning.